Okay. Well, thanks for coming out to this pre-draft uh, press conference. It's great to see everybody in person. It seems like uh, it's been years, but uh, and it kind of has, I guess. But uh, before we get going, uh, <clears throat> some some thank yous in this this draft process that I want to um, talk about, and and uh, some people that are extremely important to this organization that are very much behind the scenes. Uh, with our draft pre uh, preparation and process that started uh, at the end of May uh, last year. And, uh, and I have some notes so I don't forget people and I have clear thoughts, okay? So uh, uh, Trent Kirshner, I want to thank Trent, uh, Matt Berry, Kirk Parrish, Aaron Heinlein, Nolan Teasley, Willie Schneider, DJ Horde, Jason Barnes, Alonzo Highsmith, Josh Graff, Todd Bruner, Ryan Florence, Patrick Ward and Brian Ayers. I uh, really especially want to thank uh, Kirk and uh, Armani and uh, Ryan Simmons. Uh, we're, we bring these guys in and zip them around to doctors, and and they're they're cruising around picking these guys up at the airport, and and uh, you know Kirk's basically planning all these uh, meetings we have and and working with the coaching staff and the scouts to get everything set up. It's a huge process, so. Uh, just really want to thank those guys. You know, it's it's um, you know this draft is an it's an entertainment deal, right? Everybody gets it, and it's it's these guys' livelihood. You know, uh, I wish you could spend a, a fall with these guys, going out and and uh, being away from their families. You know, staying at Marriott courtyards at night, typing reports. But the passion that these guys have, uh, the passion that they display every day throughout the fall for our team, where we're headed in the future is. It's really awesome to see, and, and uh, you know, Coach Com Pete comes and sits with us all the time in there in our, our different sets of meetings. Uh, we're going to be finishing up today. <clears throat> Excuse me, we're finishing up today, and the coaches will join us on Friday and Saturday to kind of tweak some things, and then, uh, you know, Pete and I will work through some things as we uh, as, as as we get there. But I wish you could just understand and feel that passion. You know, it's it's a it's a pretty cool thing. Um, I also want to thank our uh, our doctors, our entire our entire uh, medical staff, uh, the physicals, all the questions that we hammer them on. And uh, we had our last meeting last night, our last medical meeting, and you know we lost a couple players, but we gained a couple players, so it's pretty cool. Um, it's a, always cool meetings. These guys are really good people, very intelligent, great communicators, and you know also our the video guys. Uh, the process that they go through, all the cut-ups that Pete and myself and the coaching staff and the scouts asked them for. These guys are building libraries for us all the time. Uh, Rob Porteous and his staff, James Churchill spends a ton of time doing working on this stuff for us all throughout the fall. John Mallory, Taylor Bailey, and, and, and Jordan uh, Schleiser. I mean, awesome. And like I said, Dr. Calfane, you know, sitting in traffic, coming all the way over here, you know, all the doctors going down to the combine. It's a big deal for us spending the week down there and, and, and working with our presentation. I also want to thank the coaching staff. They've been unbelievable. Uh, our communication collaboration has been, in my opinion, off the charts uh, since, you know, Pete and I got here in 2010. It's very refreshing. Um, for some reason, I can't really put a finger on it, but it's it's just been the communication has been off the charts. We're gonna get, like I said, we're gonna get together this weekend. But all the way through free agency, uh, you know, we have new defensive coaching staff too, uh, a couple of new offensive coaches. But it's uh, it's just been awesome. We're gonna have a great weekend in here, and um, you know, the collaboration. Like I said, the collaboration's been awesome, and you know, we talk about competition, collaboration, and culture all the time. And 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 I think, you know, when you um, I don't know. I can't. Again, I can't put my finger on it. But there's a certain energy in this building right now. There's a certain uh, refreshness and juice. And I, I don't know if it's, you know, Chuck Arnold's staff coming in, uh, back in the building. You know, the business people upstairs on the third floor. There's like 50 some new faces, smiling faces in the in the lot in the uh, cafeteria that we don't, you know, we don't even well, we don't even know a lot of their names yet. You know, because we've been embedded in what we're doing. But. Uh, it's, there's a really cool energy there. Uh, you know, like I said, the scouts coming in, being in the in the draft room again, being able to spend that time together, studying, preparing for the draft, trying to figure things out. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, the uh, the juice and the energy of the of the coaching staff. You know, I, I can't I can't tell you. You know, it's, it's just very hard to describe. I wish you'd be able to sit here in in here in a in a team meeting and and um, and feel it or or feel it up in the hallways upstairs. It's just a uh, I don't know. There's, there's it's a really cool juice going on, and um, 
I guess, you know, to see all the, the players coming in, right, the players coming back on Tuesday and seeing the, you know, coaching the coaches and the players getting together and the scouts that haven't seen the guys that they scouted in their area and hugging those guys up and, you know, hugging, um, you know, Stu in the, in the cafeteria upstairs and, and Strick and everybody involved. And, you know, when you think of uh, everything we go through, uh, you know, Pete and myself and you know, the staff and, uh, you know, after a season, the season feels like it was – I don't know how you feel, but it feels like it's like two, three years ago to me. Uh, we've moved on, you know, we've been moved on and preparing for where we're going and implementing our plan and, and, and working our tails off. And, you know, when you see that interaction with the players and, you know, the support staff, you feel that, you know, when we have to make these tough decisions and move on from players, you understand why it's a tough decision. Be You know, it's it's tough for everybody involved, right? Because... This is a great place. I mean, f you know, not only do we have great ownership, our fans are off the charts, loudest stadium in the National Football League, you know, facilities, we have everything we need. And, you know, I mean, you can look upstairs, you could talk about, you could talk about, you know, the people in, you know, corporate sponsorships and ticketing and, you know, marketing and, you know, our community, our community uh, outreach people and how we, you know, work with the military and, it's just great to have everybody back in here and, you know, and you feel, you feel that from the players. And I would say, you know, you talk about like uh, our support staff and like what is the core of this building and our culture. Uh, there's, there's, there's definitely pillars here and I'm going to go through some names because these people are very important and you can, you can see all these players and, and, and even our staff members reach out to these people and it's, you know, I'm going to, you know, Mo Kelly and, you know, Dave Pearson and Eric Kennedy, Chad Sensenbaugh, you know, George Engelbright and security and, and uh, Sam Ramsden, David Strickland, Matt Capurro, uh, Jeremy Young, Rob Porteous, you know, Stu, like I said, Stu McNabb, you know, I mean, if, if, our, if our cafeteria wasn't here, like, I don't know what we would do in this building, right? Like, our food is off the charts there, was it? Andrea uh, Vanderwood, you know, um, our nutritionist. So, uh, just... You can really feel it, and again, it's 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 exciting times. You know, we have uh, we currently have eight picks. We have four in the top seventy-two. Uh, so, you know, there's a there's a real excitement about that, and and, and an enthusiasm. And you know, I was uh, you know, I don't sound like I work out all the time, but I was getting a workout in yesterday morning watching TV, <laughs> and uh, you know, they were talking about you know the NFC West and all the problems that everybody has and everything, and. I don't know. It just brought me back to this energy of like a, you know, the 2012 draft when, you know, we we overdrafted a pass rusher and we we drafted a linebacker that didn't have any instincts and you know we drafted a quarterback that didn't, you know, fit the height mold and we overdrafted a nickelback and we overdrafted a third down back and you know we converted a defensive lineman to an offensive lineman who is still playing for those who are keeping track or was last year but um, you know. Uh, it just and then afterwards, right? Everybody giving us Fs, and but the, the the message is that in this building we were super excited. We knew where we were headed, you know. Pete um, and his staff had a great plan. Um, it was loaded with competition, and, and and we're excited to see that competition. We're thankful for the guys that resigned with us: uh, Rashad Penny, Kyle Fuller, Will Disley, Sidney Jones, Al Woods, and uh, two-time Pro Bowler Quandre Diggs. I'm not sure why. He doesn't get enough credit for being, you know, back to back Pro Bowler, but that's cool. Um, but uh, our new guys that are joining us uh, through Runner City Free Agency, uh, Chenna, Artie, Quentin, kind of, you know, he, he came back to us, but uh, Austin Blythe, Justin Coleman, um, and then uh, Joel uh, from the Bears. I'm not, I Iggy. have a hard time. Iggy. Iggy. Okay, I have a hard time with pronouncing his last name, but it is E A Booty Way. You got to slow down with it, right? Um, the guys we added in the trade, okay? Uh, you know, um, Drew Locke and, and Noah Fant and, and uh, Shelby Harris. Excited for those guys. Excited for the new opportunities for guys that you all haven't really seen or the fans haven't really seen yet. They haven't been able to, um, for one reason or another, get in there, like Kobe, Co uh, Cody Par Barton and uh, Trey Brown, uh, you know, injured last year. Marquise Blair, you know, Rough, rough deal with injuries for him. We're excited for him. D. Eskridge, Kobe Parkinson, Stone Forsyth, you know, guys that you all haven't really seen yet. We're excited for them. 
Um, you know, we're excited for the competition to be underway. Like I said, to keep Im implementing our plan and to keep uh, keep pushing forward with every avenue of acquisition, trying to do whatever we can to uh, help out our staff, our coaching staff. And, uh, you know, you see these guys working, the, the, the coaching staff, the teachers, all the teaching going on. And and um, we're excited to see that into the spring as we add these, this new draft class and then, you know, competing with waiver claims and, and uh, trades. January 1st, guys, could you know, cap casualty players. You guys have seen us acquire people in the middle of July. Uh, we'll be competing every day. And, you know, we're excited to get everybody together, uh, watch the coaches teach and develop and, and – uh, you know, the man next to me, so we've been together now. This, was, this is our 13th draft, and, uh, um, you know, I uh, have a, a ton of love and respect for the man next to me, and I would say that um, adding all that together, I've never been around a person that instills uh, confidence in any individual, not just football players, um, than Pete Carroll. So, uh, okay, that's what I wanted to get off my chest. So you want to go ahead? Yeah. See, he usually does that. <laughs> Nicely done. If anybody wants uh, those names, I noticed that Greg was taking copious notes, and he's got them all written down. <laughs> yeah. There, there is, just to amplify one thought here is that, that uh, the players coming back is like the, the third floor uh, personnel coming back. It, it, it really has energized the building, and, and uh, it's been really fun to get, get going. And uh, there's, there, is a, there is a real good excitement about it. So uh, we're pumped up. And I think it's all the draft and the new players and, yeah. the, and the, you know, it's all added to that. So we're fired up about it. So what's up? John, you mentioned 2012. This is the first time you'll have a top half of the first round pick since then. Just yeah, we don't know what to do with our hands, right? No, it's a, that's a really good thing, right? Um, what's that like? Just how different is Thursday going to be for you, given you're not waiting around for three hours to decide what you're going to do? And yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be different. We haven't experienced since since the first year we were here. We had, uh, you know, the two first-round draft picks. And uh, so there's a lot of um, planning, a lot of, uh, you know, thoughts that go through your head, a lot of different scenarios. Um, you know, we may pick at nine, we may not, we don't, we don't know yet. We're not, we're going to do it, whatever we can to help this football team as much we, as we possibly can. And, and, uh, it's, it's obviously exciting, but it's not necessarily a place that you want to be drafting. With the two picks back, back in the second round, what does that do flexibility wise, whether it's, you just pick two good players there or gives you flexibility to trade up, trade back, add picks, just all the different options. Yeah, that was a big part of the, the trade, you know, uh, being able to uh, have that flexibility with a second uh, draft pick, especially in this year's draft, the way, th you know, the way things look to us. Uh, but it does give you flexibility in picking back-to-back -back or being able to um, move around if, if, if we deem necessary. You try to trade back in the first round. Is it? Have you found that it's been easier or harder to find a partner when they're not after a quarterback? I mean, when the team's going to come up, isn't trying to search for a quarterback? Uh, I haven't experienced it up here. At you know, picking picking. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. You usually experience it, you know, towards the back of the round. You know, like in the back of the round where people are pretty. Uh, they're you know they're. They have a level of urgency about them. You, can, you know, you can kind of tell when you're speaking to people, and you know, and you kind of have on your board where you think certain quarterbacks are going to go. So yeah, there is a level of urgency that, that teams can have. Uh, but you know, at you know, when you when you're picking in the top ten, we're not we're not used to that. So we'll see how it goes. You know, we'll get through our meetings and um, you know, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. You know, Thursday we'll be on the horn with everybody trying to figure out uh, where we're going to go and where if we're going to stay and pick. What do you remember about having a top 10 pick 12 years ago with the, just the experience of, of having that spot? <laughs> well, yeah, we're, we're pretty new. <laughs> you know, this is, that was a long time ago. Um, but it, there, is, there is definitely an excitement about this because you can – there's only so many things that can happen. You know, when you're picking 25th and 8th and 28th and down, it's, you know, there's a million scenarios. This is not like that. It's a little different. So there's a different level of excitement about the, the opportunity. And then we'll – as John said, you know, we'll – We'll be interested to see how other people see it, and are they willing to come, you know, come chasing that that spot too? So, uh, it, it it's just everything about it is just more more challenging, more exciting, and we're looking forward to it. You talked for a while about 
get Gino back, to get that done, just knowing that he's here. Just yeah, it's done. real important for this stability moving forward. You know, he, he's been here a number of years. He's got great background with us. And, uh, you know, so he brings that, that real sense of, uh, you know, what we're all about. And uh, he can, he's helping the, the younger quarterbacks, you know, as they're transitioning to learning our stuff. Um, he's a great illustration for them, what, you know, what it takes and also. It, just, it feels good. He's really excited about the opportunity, and it's going to be a real competition. Does, does getting Geno back change your thoughts on needing to add another quarterback going forward in the draft or however? Or? No. no. How, how do you assess the, this quarterback? I mean, it seems like there's a lot of uh, this, the draft class, the, the, the guys who are going to be available, just kind of in general, what's out there. How would I assess it? I would say uh, there's a quietness about it that, you know, can make – can make people feel either, you know, anxious or extremely calm. Um, there's not a lot of, uh, doesn't seem to be a lot of buzz right now. So <laughs> that's happened in the past too, where all of a sudden, I think it was the year that, uh, it was the year uh, Jake Locker and Ponder and that whole group of guys went, or it was pretty quiet and then they all went really high. Is your phone ringing more because you're at nine? Uh, no, not it, no. It, it usually it pretty much stays the same. Because <laughs> people people know that we're very open to, to uh, moving around. We're pliable. Um, so yeah, it well, stays did, the same. Sorry, sorry. How did how did the COVID year and the extra eligibility guys had maybe change the the depth of this draft and? Is there more available maybe in the middle rounds than there is in pre Yeah, I think it's, that's a great question. Uh, we knew uh, last year, you know, that it was going to be things, it was going to be really, you weren't going to have all the answers to the test, right, with no combine, uh, limit ac limited access to the players. Uh, it was, you know, one of the primary reasons we, you know, um, besides Jamal being a phenomenal football player is one of the primary reasons we, we decided to make that trade. This trade or this uh, this class, I would say, uh, with all the seniors coming back, uh, I think you see um, maybe less impact impactfulness and more uh, quality throughout the entire draft. John, is there any one group, OP, that moved up since the combine or reaffirmed what you thought going into the combine to now? Probably don't want to say yeah, that. not that I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry, not that I want to share it with you. <laughs> yeah, sorry. It's a great question. I'd ask it too. Heck. Uh, a, lot, a lot of these quarterbacks uh, in this class, or every class, really, they play any spread stuff, not really pro style. When you got when you got to meet with some of the guys in this class and got them on the board, you know, how were they um, with the mental stuff? Okay. Yeah, guys have been really impressive. The, the the class of guys, they're they're raised well, and and. Uh, Regardless of you know the style of the offense, these guys are prepared for this this time, and uh, they've held their own. We, John's guys and, and our coaches have had numerous meetings with guys and just trying to dig in and figure out you know where they are, are their limitations and their in their background. And these guys are, have been really impressive. So um, I, don't, I don't think the style of offense is, is a big factor. The guys are they, they're repped out and they know what they need to know and um, they're ready to you know for the next challenge and all of that. It's pretty obvious difference in maybe readiness or processing between the guys who did play in a pro style versus guys who played in the spread? No, we, we do appreciate the fact that when guys have been under center, you know, and some guys that have never been under center, you know, the, the, that that's a little bit of a setback, but it, it really transitions really quickly for the most part, and that's really not a big factor. For offensive linemen, is it still the same that there's still a big golf and a big learning curve because of the two-point stances and the... It, it, depending on which programs they come from, yeah. you know, if they come from the heavy running programs, it's not not as big a deal. But the guy, there's some teams that throw the ball all over the yard, and they're, you know, it's all gun runs, and and there's a difference to their style. Yeah, there's there's some transitioning there to, to maybe more so than the QBs even, you know, because you don't physically see them in a stance and roaring off the football, you know, taking a snap from center they can get done, but getting in a three point stance is a different deal, and and uh, so it just it depends on the emphasis of the program they come from, really. You found that it takes time to make an NFL lineman now more so than 10, 15 years. Ago. I, I don't. I don't think that. I, I, don't, I don't think that. 
that may be the case, you know, with people not coming off the rock as much as in in past. But um, we're, we're I don't know. We've kind of grown with it and kind of you know come along with them. So I, I don't feel like it's that big a deal. John, you mentioned uh, Stone Forsyth. There's only three tackles on the roster right now. How has his presence in Jake Curhan maybe influenced not signing a veteran at that position during free agency? Or does that speak more to the draft class that's coming? It's a great question. The chops look awesome, by the way. Nice work. I could never pull that off. Uh, but, yeah, I, I think that, you know, those guys, they, they, Jake, you know, had was able to have more play time last year, so we have a better evaluation of him. Uh, you know, Stone, you know, started a left tackle in the SEC, you know, against, you know, one of the first games we ever put on with him was against Georgia, which, you know, they might have like, I don't know, it feels like 220 players getting drafted this year or something, especially on defense. So, you know, Stone's played, he's played big boy football and, and uh, he knows, he knows what it's all about. I mean, you study these, you know, especially, you know, you know, uh, these offensive linemen, you know, um, to Greg's question, I mean, you know, you, 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 you study all these off different offensive linemen, these different systems, you know, there's guys that are still running the football. There's teams that, you know, play like slow spread and run the ball. There's teams that play up tempo. You have to know uh, exactly what these guys are doing. Um, like there's a couple of schools that, you know, they have lighter offensive linemen because they're just, their tempo is so fast. You know, they want to get as many series as they possibly can um, in studying those and watching all those games. But uh, and as we watch those games and it seems like we've been in there for months. We, I mean, we, turned off the music this morning because we've listened to every genre of music you could possibly listen to over the last three weeks. So we started um, we started with German lessons this morning in there. So um, while the film was running, so a little bit of a rambling question or answer. Sorry, I apologize. It's because you didn't want to answer. Are wondering about the? <laughs> are you guys wondering or worried about the future of the combine and guys skipping it and thinking it's oh I'm just going to show up and throw and not do anything else or anything like that? It's always no, I no, not yet. It's always the combine. You always have guys that are going to do one thing or the other, and they're going to they're going to do their own thing. I think the majority of guys are still extremely excited, and you know, and probably feel very blessed to be able to be invited to the the combine. Keith, how much do you still lean on um, guys in college that you worked with before, like a Kiffin or or Orgeron or something like that, when you're trying to get info on prospects? My guys that are in there, yeah, I'm leaning on. Yeah, they're not all you know doing it, but the, yeah, we still use the connections that we have as much as anything. So, you know, the, that that kind of information exchange can be as valuable as anything we get. You know, because you know the people that you that you're dealing with and all. So we're using every asset that we have. How has the transfer portal and maybe the movement in college changed some of that? Well, they're getting ready for free yeah. agency at an early age, man. Yeah. <laughs> you know, getting paid. I, I, we don't really know the impact of that yet. You know, yeah, we'll feel so it. Ne we'll definitely feel it next year. You, yeah, next adjusting, years. but uh, you know, we we were <laughs> funny story. If you want some inside stuff, we were watching some offensive linemen like you know a couple weeks ago, and and uh, we're like, oh, this guy, you know, one of the, the actually we were watching pass rushers, and there was an offensive lineman after offensive lineman after offensive lineman that they, they all kept getting beat by this guy. And we're like, man, he must have entered the transfer portal like during the season. Is that the same guy? Because <laughs> they had the same number. But it's definitely going to affect it. I mean, they're seeing it already, you know, going to some of these pro days. Uh, you know, the coaches are, are asking our, our area scouts how, how, you know, how to handle it. You know, how do they – because they have to be on top of it at any, every every moment a guy can split. So it's going to be – it's going to be pretty crazy. It's going to be interesting to see the impact of guys getting paid when they're 17, 18 years old, you know, and, and just how that affects the way that they look at things. And we won't know that until there's a couple generations here, uh, or at least a couple seasons of those guys get, coming through. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's certainly rattled the cages of the college world. You know, the coaches are they're into all kinds of stuff now. It's different than it's ever been. And, and um, th there's really no way to see what the impact is going to be yet. But it's it's going to have an impact. There's no doubt. I mean, a kid that's getting recruited in his junior year to how much he's going to make when he's going to college, what's that kid going to be like? You know, we've always had, you know, kind of ways of looking at kids that are the high-profile guys early on. You know, the five-star guys and how that affects them. And, and it definitely has an effect on some of the players. This is going to have a definite effect on some of the players um, that we I don't know that we can predict at this time. You know, so it's going to be really interesting. 
I'll, I'll be fascinated to see how this how this works, and, and I and can't wait to understand it better. I know it's only been a couple of days, but what Drew Locke being here and, and running some stuff, what, what has been an initial impression of him? His, his first impression for me is that he's really excited about about the new energy of our club, uh, the energy that, that he can feel from you know the players and the coaches about his opportunity. Um, he's upbeat and, and very comfortable with how the, everything's gone so far. So um, it's been really quick, but uh, he's been open to, to say that you know and express that. And so uh, um, you know it's a new lease on life for him, and he's he's looking forward to taking full advantage of that. He's coming in with his competitive hat on and ready to roll. So um, it's going to be really exciting to see how he how he fits in. Is your stance on uh, whether to take the philosophy, whether to take the best player available or fill a particular position need, has that changed over the years, and is it different with the top ten pick? No, it hasn't changed. It's uh, Larry. It's. Um... It's the way our grading scale is. We've added to it, you know, since we've been here. We've adjusted some things and tweaked things along the way. But I say our grading scale. It's really, it's really like Al Davis, Dick Steinberg, and and Ron Wolf kind of combined. And we've added, we've added a couple, you know, things to it. Um, so it's not like our grading scale. It is our grading scale, but it was developed way before we, and that includes drafting for your team, not necessarily for the league. So that's, again, why, you know, sometimes you see, you know, um, rankings or whatever, you know, in the, in, in the media, and we draft for our team. We don't draft for, um, like, what the, how the league feels about people. That's where you get in trouble. In the building, any chance to talk to you know his his future? Obviously, still a, a discussion. Any chance to talk with him about that? And what does it mean? I guess that he's back here with you guys. Uh, I'm just kind of talking throughout the off season and uh, and to now. I know he's really excited about being back. He's he's still rehabbing uh, from surgery, but um, he's involved with everything we're doing. He's really tuned in, and I'm really you know happy to see the way he's returned to us. You know, with a lot a lot of stuff in the future coming up and all of that. Um, he seems to be very focused on what's going on right now and being, you know, in position to help other guys, you know, as we get started. So it's a, he's shown a really good mentality about about the return. Um, so, the you know, as far as conversations and all that kind of stuff about the future of it, it's been kind of we haven't really been directly on the topic at this point. You have, how's Chris Carson coming along at this point? Do you have any better feeling for how he's progressing? We really don't have any any uh, real updates at this time. It's still going to take some time. Still working through it, and uh, it's still a process. And he's really working hard. I know that, and it's really important for him to take it as far as he can. So we'll just have to wait and, and take buy some time to figure that out. He's such a young player still, but have you seen him kind of taking on a little more leadership with this team getting younger? There's no question. There's no question. He feels it. He, he senses the opportunity and, and uh, is I think it's as he returns, you know, in a situation where it's not ideal because he's not able to do all of the workouts and stuff right now, he's engaged in everything he can be. You know, he's really giving himself to the process because I, I know he need, he knows his teammates are looking to him and he can sense the, the, the role that he's in and that's upcoming. Um, so it's going to be a really uh, a, Great process to watch him emerge and, and become uh, a, a bigger factor, in, particularly for the younger guys that, that come in and all that, as leadership always is. Um, but he's he's ready to assume that role more so, and uh, he's going to do a really good job with it. We really need him. What exactly happened to DK's foot? Uh, he he had a um, from an old surgery. He had a, a little work done just to kind of clean the old surgery up. So they. It, Seemed to make a little transition over time, and so uh, he got something fixed up in it. Any update? Quandre and Jamal they're coming off their surgeries. Any update on where those guys are? These guys are doing great. They're they're really uh, excited, enthused with with what's happening. Um, really positive. It was great to see Quandre when he came out to sign his deal, and and uh, really everybody was really pumped about that. Um, both those guys are are working and maintaining the rehab that they're in to try to maximize these these few cru uh, crucial weeks in here until they c get back in here. Um, everybody's con connected and zooming and doing all of our stuff, and, and uh, so it's working out great. John, you mentioned the meetings with coaches you guys love coming up. On the defensive side of the ball, do those take on any extra meaning with a new staff, some new scheme things, just some changes on defense? You know, Pete had a Great idea, but when the scouts came in right away, and that was to, um, to get together with the staffs, both staffs, right? But 
to your point with the new defensive staff, hey, this is what we're all about. This is what we're looking for. So we didn't delay that process. Uh, you know, we obviously the you know the people that are in the building, you know, uh, you know Trent and Matt Berry and Nolan and Willie and you know all, and DJ, every, every, you know, Trent, everybody in the, that that's in our group that's that's here every day has been able to spend a ton of time with with Clint and um, and Sean and, and and Carl and get a feel for them. But uh, you know, I think being able to get together at the beginning of a process, which we we have we haven't done, so and. Uh, that was a great idea, and it worked out great for us in terms of getting to the process. It's a real positive to get the, just a new outlook, you know, a new perspective. And for us in competitive mentality, we, we're trying to figure out new things and see things differently through their eyes and their experience. And so there's an, an energy about that that John's embraced, you know, with getting our guys together and stuff. And um, it, it's been part of all that, you know, you know, John was inspired to talk about, you know, that there's a lot of energy about all of that. And we've got some really fascinating interesting new guys from really good experiences and stuff that are, you know, are helping us and then being you know challenging us and stuff and which is great those new faces and ideology different ideologies has that influenced at all the types of prototypes that you're looking for in terms of players for scheme fit and free agency uh, in the draft or well is it pretty similar I don't think prototype wise I think but their insights that they bring you know just from another perspective and other great coaches that they've worked with and all um, it's just cool to hear what they think about the same things you know and describe things that we've been describing for years and and just mix that new information to kind of you know keep tooling us up and keep us going and keep us on our toes it's been good on that, on that same note, 32 inch arm thing cornerback there for a little bit then last year you start Trey you start DJ does he come up off that now and just doesn't matter how long guys are. Where'd you now, get that 32 inch thing? We don't, we don't have that written down there. Anyway. I think we put that out there, yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah. Okay, that was the old one. Okay, yeah. Um, the numbers are diminishing, my friend. <laughs> so <laughs> no, it's, it's, you it, take what you can get. <laughs> yeah, it, it, that is, that's not something really, Michael, that's changed in the, in the thought that, you know, that, the, that attribute is one that does help a guy's play, but not everybody has it. So you got to, you know, take a look at the guys and see what they got. Um, and I think, I've, I think I've become more flexible with the thought um, and just recognizing the talents that come in a different package sometimes. And, and uh, I thought Trey was a great example of that. He, and I'm really excited about his future. Uh, and, and so, uh, but when, when we see it, like we liked it, we still, we still love it now. Yeah. <laughs> so. Is the direction you guys maybe want to do more of defensively next year with the 3-4 or whatever, does that change what you're looking for defensive players in this draft at all? Um, there's, there's some subtleties to that. Sure. Yeah, there's some subtleties to that. And, and uh, yeah, um, it's, it's still a hybrid 3-4 that, that is very similar to the stuff that we've done for the, over, over years. But uh, Clint has, a, has a, some background, and, and Sean has a background, and, and, uh, and also with Carl, that you know, we're, we're, we're working to expand. We're, we're always trying to get better. And so um, as, we, as we go through this, you'll watch and see how we do it. But uh, I think you'll see, some, you'll see us being affected by the, by the, the new outlook some. He looks at the trade you made in March. They're always going to judge it based on how the guys who came in do and how these picks work out. Obviously, you're just trying to make the best picks for this franchise. But does that Did ever you say trade for Marshawn? No, 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 the trade oh. for March. Oh, in March. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the trade like, you made wow, in March. Wow, you're coming back, bro. Yeah, we're going to back, yeah. <laughs> no, everybody kind of grades it based on how the guys who come here do and obviously how these draft picks pan out. Does that ever cross your mind in this process and like in kind of looking forward years down the road and that sort of thing? Yeah, the excitement of it. Right, like the the freshness of it, the the uh, like I said, you know, the coaching coaches getting their hands on new players and accentuating their strengths and and uh, you know, I, I it's just yeah, I would say there's an excitement to it. Yeah, I would say about about that. Excuse me, the, um, the fact that um, as outsiders would look at you look at the numbers as they have been and as they may have been in the past we don't look at it that way we look at we're kind of where they were but we're looking at where, where they can go under our guidance you know and and how we can uh you know enhance and bring out the best in guys and and so that's an exciting part of this thing you know so we, we project forward you know not and and we'll base our evaluations down the road you, know, you said that but it's easy to look at kind of where everybody's from. Okay, that's the, you're getting exactly this, and you're getting exactly that. I don't, we, I don't know that that's really the case. That we're we're going to put our own little touch on these guys and see if we can draw out some stuff and some some part of their play that maybe we haven't seen. You know that we're you know, we're looking forward to. I think that's the, yeah. I think the, the the excitement of it is knowing that that you know knowing how Pete affects people, and then 
you know, how he affects his staff and then how his staff's going to affect the players. That's a, that's a pretty cool thing to see when you have established players that you can study on film and just, you know, watch what they've been through, how they performed, and then try to project how they're going to Yeah, let me give you a shot on that one. The, um, the thing that we're, when we look at our guys, in, in, whether they're the free agents or part of a trade or part of the draft, we're looking for where we think they can, we can take them, you know? And so we're, we might not be exactly the same as they're viewed by others. As John was talking about, we're draft for our own team, and that's, that includes the way we look at, at, a, at a particular player. And the, the, really the basic thought that I've shared with you guys before is we're looking to see something special in these guys, and then we want that to come to the front. We're not trying to you know, just stick them in a, in, a, in a particular box of style. You know, we want to see if we can come up with something and really enhance what they, have, what they bring. So uh, it's a big part of it. It's an exciting part of it. For both, you, for both of you, how exciting is the call, making that call? I mean, you're changing lives and families, and uh, we've heard some great you know, moments over the years. How exciting is that for both yeah. of you guys? You're talking on draft day. And yeah, it's, yeah. it's, yeah, it's, it's amazing, especially for, you know, somebody like myself that never, ever even close to step the National Football League to call somebody and tell them that they have the opportunity of a lifetime is pretty amazing. And then like to hand the phone over to Pete Carroll or they're at their house probably being like, oh, you know, thinking like, oh, I'm going to talk to Coach Carroll. This is awesome. You know, um, but yeah, I think it's 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 really exciting. You, it's uh, it goes really fast though. You yeah, it's, it's such a blur. But it's yeah. it's like it's like the moment of winning the game. Really, you know, it's that moment that you just you know you just accomplish something really special. But and we know on the other end of that phone call is what as soon as we hang up, they're going crazy and all that. So it's it's a it's a really really wonderful moment. John, you dropped some parallels to the 2012 draft, and that was a really pivotal point for you guys. Kind yeah. Of like a turning point. Do you think you can? This can be a similar, like a turning point for the franchise. Yeah, there's an. I'm, I'm talking about the energy and the way we feel in this building. You know, like, uh, like where we are. You know, in our bubble, right? You know, uh, we feel awesome about it. We have a an excitement about it, and you know, um, there's kind of a little bit of underdog feeling. It it's refreshing and it feels fun. It feels competitive as, as crud. So, yeah, uh, you know, it's. Uh, and we've concentrated on people again. Yeah, it's it's great that we haven't had the opportunity to draft real high. You know, <laughs> well, that's a good thing. You know, and, and it's subtle and all that. But uh, so when you get that opportunity, it's a new deal. So we're, it does take us back in that regard. Do you feel like you guys have to reassure the fan base up to us? Heck, we had to go out and win. Heck, if yeah. that's what you're talking about. Yeah. I don't know about reassuring. We're not used to losing. No more than so. we got to reassure, you know, Pete. <laughs> we got to get Pete reassured, too, and the coaches. and Everybody, everybody wants to come back and do something good here. So, uh, um, you know, I'm going to make that a blip on the screen. You know, yeah, I, I think, you know, uh, as, as I was, you know, preparing for this, you know, press conference last night, talking with my wife, you know, about some things. When I was talking to Tracy, and I, I wanted to emphasize, you know, in 2010, when 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 we had like our first press conference or whatever, I wanted to let people know that hey, growing up in in Green Bay, Wisconsin, all I cared about, you know, was what were the Packers doing every single day to get better, right? And and so that's the message. I haven't said that in years, but the fans need to know that. I mean, whether it's the coaches or you know the guys in sports science, the people in, in you know in our, our trainers taking care of people, the strength conditioning guys, our equipment guys, everybody, you know we're doing whatever we can every single day to have a consistent championship caliber football team, and fans need to take you know there has to be a reassurance of that right, and what we can say is that it it really doesn't stop, it's a 24/7 you know process. You mentioned the unique phone call when you drafted KJ Wright because I think he was in his uh, college graduation ceremony. Yeah, what other stage. calls uh, stand out in your mind as, as the ones that you remember the most? I don't know which ones. Uh, I, I like the one when we called uh, Joey. Called Bruce. Bruce was awesome. Yeah, man. Bruce was a cool one for me personally because we I had a lot of background with him, you know, and he'd been through a lot of hard stuff, and a lot of big time life challenges, and and to let him know that he was a number one pick that was that was important to me because I, I missed him as a as a Trojan, you know. We tried to get him, now, couldn't get it done, and uh, so for me it was a you know we, we won that one because we finally got him. But that was one I always be grateful for. That was cool. I would say uh, you know Russell's call. Yeah. You know, that was a he that was a huge one. Yeah. John, as you guys have 
Couch that go work for other Russell Okun, sorry. I apologize to Russ. Jeez. I mean, I was so nervous. It was the first person I ever called him. Like, sorry. <laughs> Wait, you're drafting me? You know. Sorry. Uh, as you guys, scouts go, then move on to work for other teams, personnel yeah. guys, coaches. How do you maintain an edge over the years when everyone's kind of pulling from a similar playbook because they used to work for you? Yeah, it's, it's, it's an awesome question. You're, you're, learning from you know your uh, successes learning from your mistakes and then you know trying to keep your 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 ship as tight as you possibly can and we talk about that when anybody comes into our draft room it's kind of like you know when people say what happens in vegas stays in vegas right you like shut that door and once you walk out the door like we have to have there's a there's a trust level there there's a lot of people that have exposure to our board uh so we have to we have to you know have that trust in each other and that's the only way, you know, we're going to maintain that edge. Are you still interested in bringing back Dwayne Brown, or have you moved on from that? No, we haven't. We've not moved on from that. We're, just, we're still talking. There's a lot of, Greg, there's a ton of veterans still. There's a lot of very high quality guys that are, you know, just out there right now that haven't been able to, you know, find a, a specific market that they're looking for. That seems to be a little more than usual. Last, last two years. Is there a reason you can peg for that? I think I think guys have confidence in, in their abilities, and they're they're waiting for um, you know the right the right team at the at the right time, and you know guys that have made you know are really good with their money and have made good money are are you know waiting until training camp to see if anything happens with another club and if another if another club's gonna you know. I, Unfortunately, it happened to KJ last year. He signed uh, August 1st, I think. Going back to the continual improvement uh, statement, was, was that a missing or was it just more of an emphasis that you just feel it now because of the energy, it, uh, assuring the fans that the organization? No, ever since we came to walk through the doors, we've yeah. always. Yeah, we've been competing the whole time, and we, you know, we try to help message to you guys that we're always looking for every one of these opportunities as they come. We're always trying to be as ready as we can. We want to be on every deal that's out there and never miss. Understand John's make you know his calls when he when he can to stay abreast of every opportunity that's out there. That's not changed. I think it's just and. Maybe we're excited to show you again, you know, that for us, I mean, I'm going to prove it to you that we're ready again and we're going to go for it. And there's nothing that's going to keep us from battling every step of the way to get as good as we can, you know. So that's not changed, but just, but we do have to, we all have to reemphasize the stuff that's important to us and so that we can really do it well. That's, that's really what we're talking but about. But the energy, the energy, you know, post COVID is natural, I think, for any yeah. organization, yeah. any business, right? You, you're, yeah, fine with finally things finally feel you know back to normal right so you're okay so we can we can you know go to pr and hang out with dave and yeah, it's interesting. make fun of each other if we it's, want it's right inter interesting to see we're all kind of learning as as things have been affected by the change that we went through you know i mean it's affected us in a lot of ways and um, you know, just the employment setting in the country, like some people are going to work and some people aren't. Some people are going half time. You know, things have changed. So when you ask the, somebody asked the question, I thought I had, you know, are guys looking at the combine differently? Well, maybe they will. You know, maybe this, there was a, a more guys. I don't know if there was, Johnny, the guys that said, I'm going to wait and not, you know, not work out there. It might have felt like there was a few more guys that did that this time around, you know. Uh, I'll give you an idea. We, we had a, a local workout here and there was a, a, a number of guys that raised their hand and said they weren't going to run. You know, and that, that I mean, it's kind of stopped the meeting for me. They're like, you're going to miss this opportunity with the Seattle Seahawks to show who you are and what you're all about. You know, some guys did. They that, all ended know. up running pretty much yeah, after Pete well, said yeah, that, right? Yeah. But but I was surprised. You know, maybe there's a there's a wave of new thinking and that that's going to show itself in different ways as we as we go forward. I don't know. It'd be interesting to see. How the, hey. how are the German lessons going? It got hard really quick. <laughs> yeah. So we ended up turning it off and yeah. just we basically turned the music on when, you know, after we get through discussions and, you know, we're just watching game after game that we see feels like we've uh, seen. Peter Zane or I got, I got yeah, lost really early. Sorry. Well, there was a really long one in there. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Schlaf Gut was easy. And then, yeah. 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 For some reason, yeah. you picked German. Just trying to get a little bit better, you know, with our teammates. I'm trying to learn them. Anything else? <laughs> yeah, we better get Thank out of here. All right. Thank you, guys. See you.